gone. Uh, and we'll have an opportunity, I think. Keenan, when's the best time to um, introduce our new member and have him introduce himself? Uh, we can do it during the announcements. Okay. So we'll do that during um, during announcements then. And I just need a second here to pull up um, the agenda. Okay. All right. And since we have quorum, we will uh, jump right in. This is uh, the Albany Arts Committee meeting for June 13th, um, 2022. And we will start um, with a call to order and uh, uh, a roll call. Um, Keenan, um, I'll have you do the roll call following um, Member Samonski. It looks like you just joined. So um, can we have you start with the land acknowledgement? Okay, let me get to that. Good evening. Uh, the City of Albany recognizes that we occupy the land originally protected by the Confederated Village of, of Lushan. We acknowledge the genocide that took place on these lands and must make strides to repay the moral debt is owed to these indigenous people, specifically the Ohlone tribe. We thank them for the contributions which have transformed our community and will continue to bring forth growth and unity. The City of Albany commits to sustain ongoing relationships with the tribe and together build a better future for all that now make us their home. Great, thank you. And um, Keenan, would you mind taking us through roll? Yeah, of course. So roll call, uh, Chair Gatch? Here. Member Bergman? Absent. Member Bowers? Here. <clears throat> Member Goodman? Here. Member Shaw? Here. Member Samonski? Here. And Member Rexel? Okay. Um, well, it looks like we are. Oh, Member Rexall may be joining in by phone. She's still muted. I keep our six and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay, well, we can hear you now. So, okay, good. So it looks like you're, it looks like you're present. Uh, great. Well, we have quorum. Um, so we can go ahead and jump in. The first uh, uh, item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, motion right. that we approve the minutes. Right. And do we have a second? I second. Okay. And um, Keenan, would you mind taking the vote? Of course. Chair Gatch? Yes. Member Bergman? Absent. Member Bowers? Yes. Member Goodman? Yes. Member Shaw? Yes. Member Samoski? Yes. And Member Raxel? Yes. Okay, so the minutes have been approved. Uh, the next item on the agenda, agenda item number three, is public comment. And this is for anyone uh, who wants to address the committee on an item that is not on the agenda. And uh, each person is limited to three minutes. Um, do we have any members of the public that want to address the committee on non-agenda items today? And we have no public comments at this time. Okay. Um, item Agenda item number four is announcements. Uh, and I think we'll just, we'll start um, by welcoming our newest member. Uh, fantastic, thanks for joining us. If you could um, just say a few words about who you are, how you got here, what your interest in this is, uh, please take it away. Yeah, sure. So I'll start off. Uh, my name is Harsh, and uh, I was raised in LA where my parents took me to Getty when I was, I think, like 16, and it just 
blew my mind. Just, you know, a stunning museum set in the hills above LA and being able to see so many amazing pieces. And I moved to the Bay Area after I graduated from college from UCLA. And I've always enjoyed the ways in which the cities and the places that I've lived, San Francisco, Oakland, have kind of integrated um, arts into the local community. And um, I'm new to Albany. My wife and I moved to Albany last year for the kind of sense of community that it offers. And I'm I'm new, but I'm excited to you know help play a small role in helping support, develop, and promote art within the city, which to me means you know more murals, more sculptures, uh, maybe even utility boxes. Um, my taste is pretty varied, always happy to um, chat about that. Um, and uh, in my day job, I work at a company named Canva, uh, whose mission it is to empower the world to design. So excited to be here. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Um, Keenan, do we have any other announcements from staff? Um, we are... Um... We just received one of our plaques for the sculpture uh, loan program. Um, that'll be put up uh, either this week or next week. Um, but we'll definitely update the, the, the committee once that happens. Um, but yeah, uh, so right now, that's, that's the announcements for right now. Okay. And do we have any announcements from committee members? Not for me. Okay. Um, well, then that concludes agenda item number four. We will move on to agenda item number five, which is presentations. Um, do we have any presentations for this evening? Uh, no presentations at this time. Okay. Um, agenda item number six, this is our biggie. Uh, discussion of possible action items on matters related to the following items. Uh, 6-1 is the Poet Laureate Program. 6-2 is the Community Center Foyer Art Gallery, uh, where we will review the gallery schedule and program fees. 6-3 is the Creative Justice Art Project. Uh, and then 6-4 are subcommittee reports, if there are any reports from the subcommittees uh, tonight. So we will uh, begin with 6-1, which is the Poet Laureate Program. And um, Peter, I believe that's you. Uh, yes. Uh, so member Bergman and I are working on this together. Um, the, uh, the submissions for people wish wanting to become Albany's Poet Laureate closed on May 31st. And, uh, as you recall, we extended it in the hope of getting more applicants, but we did not get more applicants. So, uh, as of May 31st, we have one uh, person who has applied. Um, her name is Sheila Rap uh, Raponte. And uh, according to the rules of our uh, selection process, we uh, need to form a, a, a committee to basically discuss her application. Um, and I will outline that process for you very briefly. Um, <clears throat> uh, the Let's see what it say here. Okay, so the finalists will be asked to submit to an interview before the selection committee. Uh, addition, the criteria for selection, assuming the minimum qualifications have been met, will be the candidate's ability and willingness to fulfill the obligations of the polari position, um, particularly the ability of the candidate to produce material whose content and quality make it suitable for public performance. Selection committee. Committee may also consider the poet's skill in public readings, whether the poet's body of published work has local resonance in theme or content, and other factors that may help predict the quality and appropriateness of the candidate's performance. Um, the selection committee will communicate its recommendation to the uh, Poet Laureate Subcommittee, which will in turn will report to the Arts Committee, and then the Arts Committee will make the final recommendation to the Council we shall make the official appointment on behalf of the city. Um, the selection committee as outlined in, in the uh, original proposal uh, will have five members, one person from the Albany Arts Committee, one person appointed by the Friends of the Albany Library, one teacher from either the middle school or the high school, 
and two citizens of Albany who have demonstrated a commitment to poetry and its creation or publication. And at least one of the citizen members will be an active practicing poet. Um, the Albany Arts Committee will organize the selection committee, recruit its, recruit its membership and oversee its progress. And um, it is basically a, a, the committee meets, makes its uh, recommendation, and then it's done. It doesn't have any further role in the Poet Laureate. And the Poet Laureate program is administered by, um, well, by the Arts Committee. So uh, I, so where we're at now is um, we have to form a committee. Um, Member Bergman is going to be reaching out to the uh, school and to the library, and I'm going to um, find the uh, citizens who will serve on the selection committee. Um, the committee member who will, from the arts committee, who will be on the selection committee, uh, I assume will be either me or Member Bergman, and I've asked Member Bergman if she'd be willing to do it because uh, I think it'd be good for her to uh, have that experience and uh, for me not, not to do it. <laughs> um, so let's see. So in uh, I, I, since there's only one candidate, it shouldn't be a very long meeting. It shouldn't be a very arduous meeting. We'd like to have the candidate come in and interview. So it's a matter of setting up a schedule. Ideally, we'd like to finish it before the July meeting so that we can come back to you with a recommendation. And then presumably the Arts Committee in July will be able to say yes or no. And then we can give it to the council. As you know, August is a, uh, everything is in recess. So if we don't get it done by July, we may have to extend it over until September, although I suppose we could have a kind of a, a, an, a I don't know what you would call it, like a, just a special meeting with this one little bit, a bit of business to, uh, to carry out. Uh, so, so they, anyway, that's, that's where we are. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, Chair Gotch, you're, you're muted. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions from any of the um, committee at this time? No. Um, one question I had, um, Member Goodman, is do you have, um, like, what you outlined there in terms of, uh, like, formulating the committee, is that something that, um has already been established or is that something that we need to uh, approve it was it was it was in the original proposal back uh, last fall uh so okay. it was it was submitted to the committee i to be honest i can't remember whether the committee voted on the uh pr proposal in all its particulars or whether the paper was presented as kind of background information and people assumed that that's what we would do. Um, if there's no objection, I'd like to proceed with the, with the way that we outlined it. Uh, I, I don't know, Keenan, I guess you'd have to look back at the records to see exactly what was approved. Uh, I should mention that uh, maybe unlike some of the other meetings, um, and I, 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 um, I would prefer that this meeting, the, the selection committee not meet in public, that is to say not meet as a Zoom meeting where people can um, can listen in because we're, you know, we're going to be discussing the poet's work and that's, I, I just don't think that that's appropriate for a, a public venue. Mm. I mean, I, I mean, I'd be, I'd, I'd be okay with like doing it in two parts, one public, one private, but it's such a short meeting. I, but, you know, if someone, so people may not want to speak their mind if they feel like it's you know, going to be out there in public. Is that okay to, to do it like that or? Keenan, I think you would have to be the one to answer this. 
Yeah, no, I uh, I could definitely look into that. But um, um, for these uh, certain things, uh, special meetings um, are quite adequate for that. Okay. I mean, it could be, in other words, it could be, we could do it as a, as a Zoom meeting among the panelists, but it wouldn't be open to the public. That's what I'm asking. But I'll definitely have to um, look into that and uh, get back to you on that. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think um, it may be, it may be different in regard to, to this particular situation. I know that this question has come up a little bit in regard to, um, formulating the selection panel for the Albany Creative Justice Project. And I know in that instance, and this is and this is a different, it's a different situation because it's a, we're required to do an external panel um, because of the amount that's being awarded. But I know in that particular situation, I believe the language is such that um, the panel does have to have a certain aspect of transparency sure i don't know if it has to be fully public or if there has to be um a transcript i know from speaking to other people who are administering art committees in different cities that uh one way in which they do it is that all judging goes through um, a specific rubric and that rubric um, is public facing so the meeting itself is not necessarily on zoom it's not open to the public but all applicants are being graded on the same criteria and the, whether it's those applicants or future applicants, they can um, request from the city to see uh, how they were scored and, and kind of where they placed as a result. Um, so that may also be, I don't know if that applies to Albany, Keenan will have to kind of double check on that. But um, if, if, for example, um, there is a requirement for some, level of transparency with the meeting, you might look into establishing some sort of set rubric for um, that the panelists are using. So the meeting. Yeah, I, 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 I can understand that. I mean, so that people could could speak their mind privately and then kind of vote and then you'd have the the sort of results of the vote that are made public. I, I could see yeah. that. Okay. Well, if you could let me know, Keen, I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Okay. I had a question, which is that, you know, it sounds like there was one applicant um, in the event, this special committee that gets together and, and, and recommends, you know, uh, votes not in favor of that applicant, um, what, what happens next? Then, then the city does not have a poet laureate. Uh, okay. It doesn't mean that, um, I, I, I assume that what would happen is that the arts committee would step into kind of do something in its place to kind of serve the same function, but it wouldn't, wouldn't be the uh, specified Paul Laureate position. Got it. All right, any other questions from the committee? Um, is there an action item on this that you're looking for tonight? Member Goodman? No, I don't think so because the the what I outlined was something that we already approved. So yeah. I, I don't think no, I, I'm I'm okay with Okay. Um and then Keenan, if there's no item that's up for vote, do we still have uh public comment for this item? Oh we do, yes. Okay. Um, and do we, is there um, a member of the public that wishes to comment on this at this time? Uh, no public comment at this time. Okay. Uh, so that comes back to committee for any final discussion. All right. Um, then we will move on to item, agenda item 6-2 which is the Community Center Foyer Art Gallery. And I believe, uh, Member Samonski, I think that's you. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> so I've been working on this and uh, as you know, we were, we, we voted to get two people in for the end of the year and then start again in 2023. Um, I did secure the two artists that we voted on and our next um, installation is on 624, 
and the opening is on 626. This is Donna Kaplan. And Peter has done her cards and she is framing all her work. She's working very hard. Keenan has informed me that it is okay now to serve refreshments again. So uh, we will be having an actual opening for Donna Kaplan in the kind of old fashioned way. And she's working on that also. Um, let me see. Then we have for the last one of the year, we have uh, Jean Reddick. Uh, she's gonna she's gonna install on 9:30, and the opening will be on the 2nd of October, and it comes down right after Christmas. Then we start on our new um, proposals. I mean, our new um, gallery openings. So the call for submissions has to be out. Uh, and I think, Keenan, when is the deadline for the handbook? It's in August, isn't it? Correct. So it's, it's usually uh, historically been uh, September 1st uh, for those uh, submissions to be submitted. And then in the September meeting, we would go over the submissions to either approve them or to um, extend the deadline as well. Okay. So we have to have something in the handbook. Uh, by August, you know, what we've been trying to get a page in the handbook for the arts committee and what we're doing on the arts committee. And that includes any, any new installations, any call for artists, whatever we're doing, we're trying to get this page in the handbook so that the citizens of Albany can understand what's going on. So that needs to be in there, and I'm going to work with Keenan to get that into the handbook by August. Those submissions will be in in August, and then in the September um, meeting, we'll have, we'll be able to vote on it. Now, what I proposed for 2022 is what I mean. 2023 is what I'd like you to look at. Usually, we have four uh, gallery shows. And next year, I propose just, I, I propose five, ending in a new kind of gallery show where we open it for emerging artists that are, say, 16 to 25 or around that age who may not have, you know, a, a huge amount of art to show. So we're going to um, accept the responsibility of hanging the show and figuring out who should be in the show. And that should be somewhere like 15, 20 pieces. Um, and that will give just a new idea. You know, it'll be during the holiday season and the, it'll be interesting to see what kind of emerging artists that we have in the community. So that's the schedule I propose. And I'd like to hear your comments on that. If you have, you know, any concerns about that kind of thing. Um, do you want to stop there for a minute and let me take some comments about that? Does that sound okay to you? Sure. That sounds good to me. Um, Keenan, is it possible for you to put that schedule that Sarah mentioned up on the screen somehow? Thank you. Yeah. These are our last two shows here at the top for this year. And then next year we have five instead of four and this would be the schedule. So I have until the end of the year to get the emerging artists uh, organized, and then I would take the responsibility of hanging the show with their cooperation, or collaboration, I should say. And do we have uh, any questions from the committee? I, I like this idea. I, I think the only comment I have is, and I, I'm, I'm looking at the reference in terms of what an emerging artist may kind of be or the bandwidth of, of that definition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I, see, I see that, you know, we wouldn't necessarily seek, um, say, school-aged children, although you have an age range between 16 and 25. Given that we have a need to kind of help um provide some definition or or maybe a universe of what an emerging artist is like the rubric uh, yeah how, how do we envision doing that is that through just public announcement or have you thought through that part 
Uh, I'm going to be truthful with you. I haven't. I've been thinking about it, but I haven't got to the very, you know, the end of that. But there does have to be a definition because this is not a school art show. That's for schools to do. And it's important to do that. You know, I was the art teacher at Albany High for many years. And it's important for those students to be able to show their work. But these are for serious uh, art students that ha want a career in art and have uh, an idea of going in that direction. So um, I included 16 to 25 because if you're in advanced art or AP art, you're, you're deciding that you're serious about art. And there are a lot of great artists at that age. But it's also those uh, younger artists that haven't quite gotten into the mainstream and haven't built up enough for a show. And that's what I'm aiming at. So I definitely would have to define what that means. I get what you're saying. And maybe just a quick follow on question. I mean, have we had other artists emerging or otherwise that have been beyond your your print media or oil on canvas say say they want a video presentation, uh, you know, a mixed Mixed Thank you for asking of, that, yeah. <laughs> because that's one of my main goals, but I've got to take a little step at a time because the way I've been searching into it, because it is not a secure area, I mean, we put we put uh, things on these two-dimensional artworks, yeah. they're secure devices that, that act uh, to secure the artwork, but it's an unsupervised area. We are not equipped for mm. three-dimensional art or video art, um, which I think we should be. I think we could expand, and I hope I can by writing it, we could expand the idea of the two-dimensional art at least to, say you did jewelry or something, and you could put it in a frame that we could put on the wall, then you could still show it. Or you could do um, weaving or something that you could show a certain way. Um, I'm not sure I could show uh, like anything like pottery or sculpture yet, but I'd like to look into that because I, I think we have room for it, but it's just not something I can do right away. But I could expand it, I think, uh, if I really thought about how to do it safely. Especially like video art, we just really need, you know, something to show it on. Yeah. So, yes, I do believe it should be expanded because we are very narrow right now into two-dimensional art, you know, really graphic art, painting. Right, right. I think we did have a show in the past that was quilts, but I'm, I'm not positive about that. Yes. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, so yeah. definitely we want to expand it and get other people involved so that we can... Um, and not only that, but I would like to expand it to, say, photography, architectural photography, or something like that, you know, that we just have a more open-ended approach to what is design and art. Yes. But, uh, Peter, it looks step. like you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, uh, just to follow up, we, we have had photo, we have had photography as part of the... Yes, I know we've had photography. But not that, so much architectural, though. I, I want to no, include... No, not specifically architectural. Yeah, I want to include yeah. design. Yeah. Um, it, the, the current show is very graphic, you know, uh, graphic arts, which is, that's a great thing, too. So um, but just try to expand, you know, try to take it that, ex, you know, an expanded look at what we can put in there. Yeah. Um, uh, two other things. One is uh, just also follow up on... I wonder if, if you're talking about a secure space, is it possible to expand the gallery into the area that's in front of the community center desk? Because that room gets locked up at night, I believe. Yes, and you know, thank you for asking that because maybe I'm hallucinating, but I remember that there used to be a showcase there in that room. There was a showcase window, yeah. And uh, I had a student. A play case who was uh who was really talented he was in elementary school and i remember they put some of his work up there but i didn't see it there now yeah. but i would like to get some um 
it, it has to do with money, so I can't promise anything, but I would like to get some display cases for, you know, there's we have a lot of sculpture and ceramics in in this community and you know things like that that could be uh, or even along you know where uh the the hallway goes back to the parking lot i don't know how well, much of that space they need but maybe it could be there too but that's a huger idea i like I, it though. i i did want to ask about money though because i i noticed that you're, you're you're trying to get to a point where the there'll be budget to pay for this still don't have to kick in money themselves and i was wondering where I made this a question for quick Keenan, where's that money going to come from? Yes, it's a good question. And um, that question, maybe uh, I have to research it to see if can any of this money come from the money we're talking about that we get for the buildings and stuff. I mean, our, right now, our hands are tied as far as I understand. It. No, I don't so, think I don't think that's correct. The last really? yeah, the last conversation that I had with the city attorney was that um, part of what was in question is the duration. There's a, du there's a duration question about what um, makes a project considered public art. So for example, we currently we have um, the sculpture loan program, which is a two year loan period, which is considered an acceptable period for using the art and public places funding um, for the project. Um, other um, items, uh, the duration would be considered too brief to use it because I think there's a uh, there's something in the ordinance about um, works have to be of a certain level of permanence or something along those lines. So um, there is a question about duration. I don't know if um, in terms of of the the foyer gallery, if there's a way as other cities have done to think about the gallery itself as being public the, art. the art component that is being mm -hmm. supported and funded in the same way that, um, you know, that the pedestals were created by the city just to support the, uh, the loan sculptures. Um, that may be a possibility. The duration of each exhibition, however, might be too short to qualify for, for that funding. So it could be possible that the, annual budget for the gallery is funded through art and public places funds, um, uh, but not individual exhibitions. So we wouldn't have a budget to commission work, for example, um, or to pay a specific artist some additional fee for participating in the show. I think that's something we would have to circle back um, through Keenan uh, on. And then that's also something that um, uh, member Samonsky can look into. Yes, it's a very complicated uh, formula because what is public art? Is the gallery itself public art? And if it is, can we justify, you know, the idea of, you know, making it so we can present the art? I mean, it's, it's a very complicated question that we're trying to sort out right now, and I don't have the answers. I can only propose this and then see where it goes. I have to, I have to take it out there and see how it goes. Um, fits into this structure but as far as i can if you don't have any other questions or comments i'll go on to the fees associated with this gallery and this is something because i'm brand new at this i just i frankly just don't understand it you know so if we call for admissions and each person who fills out an application, sends in $20. So say we have, you know, 10 applications. So we're going to get $200 right there. And only four of those people are going to exhibit. So where does, where does that other money go? And why should we have that? I mean, galleries don't do that. And then we charge $50 for the postcards, which are beautiful and well done. But I don't know, do they really cost that much? Or is it maybe something they can say yay or no to? I don't know. This is my question. I feel personally that if we are supporting arts in our community and we are asking for people from our community to show in our gallery, then we shouldn't be doing this. This is, this is like 200 bucks a year. I mean, it doesn't seem too much to ask. 
to just go with that. And I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying I don't know. And so, uh, and I don't think this money would be enough to make, you know, buy display cases or anything like that. So where the money comes from and how we're collecting it is important. As well as, and I had this discussion with Kenan, is that, you know, now they ask for a check for all this money. First, the tw two checks, really, $20 and $50. That's $70 for a person to exhibit in our four-year gallery. And it has to be a check. I mean, anymore, a check seems like, isn't there another way other than a check? <laughs> no, like, I don't even have checks. So it, it has to, I mean, can we... I think we need this conversation about money. And so I would love to hear what you guys think about it. Uh, Member Goodman, you still have your hand up. I don't know if that's. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Well, I have, I have, I have thoughts on it, but I'll lower my hand. Yeah. <laughs> you can kick it off if you want. <laughs> well, it's like 1992 as far as the city is concerned. Yeah. This, yeah, you got to pay by check. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, I completely agree with you, Sarah. I mean, it's, I mean, the, the, I, I just don't understand why it's been so difficult to get the city to commit to this as a, as an important part of the city. When everyone, when you talk to all the merchants and everybody, they say art is, art is great. It brings people in. Everybody's in favor of it. It just costs so much money to do, you know, it must, there must be something wrong with it as far as the city's concerned. It's to me, it's a, it's a matter of priorities and maybe, um, you know, we need a concerted effort to really have a specific money goal in mind and then a, 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 a way of strategizing our way of talking to the city about it and finding out exactly where the obstacles are and how they can be overcome. I, I do believe it's possible. I don't think, I don't think there's any natural objection to it. I think there's just a lot of inertia and administrative obstacles in the way that we need to work with the city to get rid of. Well, it just seems to me that the $20 application fee could be eliminated right now. I mean, where does it go? I don't know. We that, can make a motion to do that. I mean, I, I, I like, I just want to clarify, like there are, there are things that, that we can do as a committee uh, that, you know, like this, there's no kind of nebulous city that's going to step in and do things for us. Like we, we need to have some Thank degree you. of agency yes. and autonomy and say, this is what needs to happen. So for example, um, if we're looking for $250 for postcards um, for five shows, $50 each for five shows, and that that funding can't come from, um, the Art and Public Places Fund, that could be something that's proposed to city council, maybe as a consent calendar item, to say we want $250 from the general fund to support uh, marketing and promotion costs for the FOIA Center Absolutely. Art Gallery. Absolutely. Thank I, you. I don't anticipate, um, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't anticipate members of city council balking at, at that figure. No, uh, I, I don't. I don't think they would. And, and in the past, whenever these, you know, smaller amounts have come up in connection with any program, the you know the liaison, uh, you know, prior to game would would basically come up with the money. And it, I don't know if it was earmarked from a particular arts fund or whether it came out of the general fund or what, but the money was available, and th they never really balked at it. But we never asked for anything terribly outrageous either, but I, I kind of agree with you, Chair Gosh, that you know if we if we can identify what we need the money for and go to the council and say we want you to approve this, that it would make it a lot clearer for everyone. Well, I just want to add that like both of these artists, all of these artists have to prep for the show, and most of these people do not have framed artwork. Do you know what it's like? how much money that is to frame 15 works of art, not only the work involved, they put a lot of money in and then they pay for all their refreshments and they pay for all this. I mean, they're paying a lot of money already. And just to put this on top of them just seems ridiculous to me. Oh, I, but I think the application fee also, you know, I think that's something that is within our power. 
If, if, yes. uh, if we wanted to have a motion um, to do away with the application fee, I think that is like, I think that's within the scope of, of what this committee can do, as I understand it. Um, uh, sorry, member. Powers. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm in principle. I, I also would like to encourage a way of not, um, fostering so much expenses onto the artists it's, uh, themselves, uh, especially the promotion and, and marketing material, the postcards. I, I think that seems to me a very reasonable cost for the city to bear. Uh, I think the application fee, the, on, the only um, obstacle in my head is we're, we're not in isolation. There are other committees or other fees and permits and applications always going on in different things. And so you unravel one and and I kind of wonder what that means for everyone else. So I I think in the broader scheme of things, the application fee is is less of a uh, a hurdle to overcome in my head than say the the publication or material cost of promoting that that artist. So I, I'm kind of thinking in my way in terms of what's what's the obstacles that are in our way. And to me the application fee is not so much an issue of what's the what's the precedent of the arts committee saying we want to waive it all um when other permits or fees or whatever are i mean i would assume all this goes into general treasury um and so that that's just another way of recouping whatever administrative costs the city wants to feel is reasonable so i i guess i'm i i would be looking for ways to yeah off set the cost to the artists, especially in publication permits. I think I, I need a little more understanding of what, what that means in, in the grand scheme of things. I think it, I think that raises um, a really good question, which is, are we working towards the norms of uh, exhibiting artists and what's expected amongst uh, exhibiting artists or, um, and how do we balance that out with the norms of city permitting as it applies to other types of, of permits? Um, in the context of the latter, in terms of the, the norms for exhibitions, uh, it's, it's generally frowned upon to ask for application fees within the arts communities. Most professional artists uh, that are working at a, at a particular level simply will not apply to anything with an application fee um, outright. That it's, it's generally considered, um, uh, it has a, has a bad reputation as a sort of money-making scheme yes um that that um is a is sort of predatory on on artists applying for application uh to an exhibition that they won't get into and that they'll therefore um pay for anyway so we, we're up against that barrier and and i think we see it in part with this last um round of applications we didn't have a lot of applications uh to the foyer gallery and i think um either getting rid of that permitting fee or lowering it substantially um, might attract more artists to show in that context. On the other hand, I think, I do think you raise a really good point um, in terms of the city and in administrative fees. Um, it, and maybe this is where we throw it over to Keenan and ask, you know, what are the fees used for? Um, is there a comparable fee in some other city permitting process that is kind of consistent with um, with an art exhibition, I don't I don't know that there is one. Keenan, any thoughts on that? Yeah, so um, I know the the fee uh, component for the applications. Um, uh, it was uh, designed from the arts committee previously. Um, but uh, a lot of the overheads for a lot of these uh, fees uh, do come down to cost recovery components, uh, where we do uh, have uh, building attendants uh, overseeing some of the uh, openings or the, the showcases, um, also to help replace and um, repair some of those panels that the um, art pieces are on. Um, but yes, uh, you guys do or can make that change if you'd like to, uh, but there does need to be a motion component for that. Uh, Keenan, I, I wonder, does the city actually track the amount of money that comes in from, say, these submission 
just so that they have a running budget as to say how far behind the arts committee is uh, or how ahead we are in in terms of uh, uh, administrative fees or are they just kind of absorb it and pay out as needed without regard to whether it's a positive or negative balance I would say everything's usually tracked, uh, but I can definitely look more into that uh, and get you a, a more sound answer as well. Well, I also wonder, uh, we have these administrative fees, but we we work within the open hours of the community center. So are you paying people more to patch the walls or is that just, you know, a regular thing maintenance people do? They patch the walls. You know, it takes about half an hour or something you know i mean where i want to see where the money is going you know what are they actually paying people more or they don't come in extra hours they they're not there beyond the regular hours i don't think we do our openings and people see the show during the open hours of the community center so i don't understand why they need extra money for that uh, i'm not saying they don't i just don't understand I don't know that I don't know that they do, but I also don't know that the they is someone other than us. I know, uh, right? I so, know. as as Keenan as Keenan indicated, it, um, it sounds like that application fee came initially from the Arts Committee. Yes. And yes. It, and if that's the case, if we feel like that is a decision made by a previous Arts Committee and it's no longer valid. Um, then again, it's within our power to, to pass a motion to rescind this. Oh, absolutely. Those, I just those, don't want them to abandon us and not, not patch the wall. <laughs> uh, Member Shah, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, my first question is just how many applicants did we get for this last round? Three. 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 Okay, so 60 bucks. bucks. Yeah. 60 bucks. I. I imagine we could probably find that within this city um, somewhere. Uh, and whether that takes sort of a special addition to the next city council meeting, I imagine it, it, it probably could be done. I, I, I think from my perspective, lowering the threshold as much as possible to get as many applicants uh, seems like a good thing, particularly because we'll just have maybe even a more diverse set of applicants. Um, mm -hmm. So. If this all starts with a motion to get rid of the application fee as well as uh, the exhibition deposit, um, I motion to uh, remove that. Now, if we're waiting for more information um, from Keen and the city, then happy to wait. But why not? Why not now? Yeah. Great. Um, so there's a motion to remove the application fee and the uh, exhibition fee. Um, do we have a second? Uh, Member Goodman, you are... Um, um, Wait, what, was the motion to remove both of them, application and exhibition fee? I believe so. Yeah. Is that correct, Member Shaw? That yeah. is correct. You don't think we can do that? Uh, well, it, I mean, is it time to discuss the motion or? I think so. Uh, we can we can second it. We can discuss it. Um, we can also. Um, I, I thought the motion would be seconded and then we discuss it. I, I, I see. I see. I'm sorry. I think You're that's so the sorry. parliamentary way, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm definitely not sure. <laughs> Keenan, elucidate us. What's yeah. what's the process here? <laughs> I, could do this. Well, I, I would definitely say if uh, if you have questions before um, seconding, uh, it would be probably better to do that. Uh, but we can always have more discussion after the motion is carried as well. Okay. okay. Well, I, I my my question uh, is simply if if we if we do we know that if we rescind those fees that 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 money is not actually used for something that we need that is being used in connection with the galleries. And, and so would it would it be better to find out whether there's any any particular way that money is appropriated before we say we, we're not going to collect it? I think, I mean, 
Keenan can jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, um, the application fee is simply a, um, a fee and the $50 fee has been used to pay for postcards. Yeah. So, uh, so, so the postcards what, be paid for. Right. So, so if we want to continue doing the postcards and we get rid of the $50 fee, then um, we would probably need to either amend the motion to include uh, asking city council for $250 from the general fund for a promotion or, um, or Keenan, uh, we could ask Keenan to try and identify other sources that um, maybe that $250 doesn't meet a particular threshold to require us to ask city council. And that could be taken from a, either a discretionary budget or a budget that's already reserved for marketing and promotion for city events. Uh, that might be a possibility. Um, but I think we would amend the motion to include maybe not just eliminating or in addition to eliminating the $50 fee to recovering the money needed for promotion from another source within the city. Thank you. Um, Keenan, any insights there? Like what? What rocks do we have to squeeze for 250 bucks? <laughs> no, I, honestly, I think the, the way you mentioned it was uh, appropriate and the right way to go about it. Um, just for our stance, um, this, a lot of those, the funds does go towards um, uh, stationing the building uh, with the building attendant, especially for the opening. Um, the community center is open. Uh, most of the days, uh, a lot of times it doesn't have classes and the library side is open. So there's uh, some components in that section uh, where we do have to uh, provide a building attendant to be there on certain days, um, but that's just more for uh, from our stance as well. Okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> what um, do you Well, how to propose it. Uh, I, I, I'll, if I'll offer an amendment to the motion, as I stated, that we rescind the $20 application fee and that um, we no longer require the burden of the $50 exhibition fee to be placed on artists, but we recover that money from other sources within the city for promotion. Okay, I can second that. Okay. Um, before we go to vote, um, if we have other, we can do other questions and then if we have public comment, we can do public comment and then we can bring it back to discussion. Do we have questions from any of the committee members? I guess my only comment is if, if we rescind both and then we later find out, um, that we cannot uh, achieve, you know, requesting finance as modest as it is for, say, publication. I, I'm definitely for rescinding the application myself. Do then we have to reinstate it? I mean, what's what's the logical process I understand after that? what you're saying, and I'm thinking that if that happens, and I can't imagine it will happen, but if it does we could just charge the artists directly. If they want the postcards, they can pay for whatever the postcards are. I mean, okay. that that would be my backup. I, hmm. Well, the, the city keeps half of the postcard, so um, city yeah. does get some use out of it. They don't have to. I, I guess, uh, Chair Gaj, I, uh, I, I don't think I can support this motion I, I certainly support in principle rescinding those fees but absent a clear understanding of how the city uh, is paying for fees associated with the gallery everything from these postcards to extra staffing to the uh, you know repairing of the um, uh, you know the, the wall boards one at the exhibit I, I just don't think that we should make you know take such a deliberate step i i think we could just get more information and then decide on the basis of that what we want to do that seems to me the better way of doing it and so for that reason i i i wouldn't i'm not gonna 
vote for your motion. Okay. Do we have other questions from committee at this time? Uh, in terms of figuring out next steps, in the event you know we decide that this is worth being investigated further, what happens next? Like if we can actually figure out if we can actually recover the funds from somewhere else and seeing this is something that's viable. Right. So right now we have a motion and we have a second. Mm -hmm. um, we could bring it to vote now, but I uh, I would prefer to see if there's also public comment and if public comment shapes um, <clears throat> the, the way that we would want to move forward or if there's suggestions there. In addition, um, after public comment, it comes back to discussion within the committee. And then, um, and then we would bring it to a vote. If the vote passes, it it passes, and we move forward. If the vote fails, um, the motion can be amended. Someone can put forward um, an, an alternate motion, um, and and we can kind of bat it back and forth until we refine it as something that, that uh, meets everyone's need. Um, I would I would also suggest that we think about a specific time frame. Right now we have, I think, three artists that are already approved. Um, and we would probably need to decide if this is something that would be enacted after the current set of artists um, or if their fees would be refunded to them. Um, I think that would also probably need to be figured out. I would imagine that we would set the date um, for the next round of artists and that we would leave the, the um, previous agreements in place um and yeah. then move forward that way but we would probably want to be specific about that um all right any other questions we can come back for more discussion but i i want to just see if there's specific questions in place at this time and if not keenan do we have any public comments Uh, no public comments at this time. Okay, so now we're back into discussion. Um, I'll just say from from my perspective, the mission for the arts committee, um, just reading off of the website, not even getting into the specifics of within the ordinance, is that the committee adheres to the public arts master plan, the art and public places ordinance, and the public arts project plan in order to support develop and promote art in Albany and increase the economic vitality of the city. Um, I think that for me, in part, what is in question is the degree to which we are supporting arts and the degree to which we are asking um, artists that are applying to support the city. I and I think the purpose of the committee and of the city funding is to support the community and and that the burden of that should not be switched around in the other direction. Um, that's my my personal preference. I think, particularly given that the amounts that we are asking are so minimal compared to um, the monthly city budget, as I understand it, um, this the monthly city budget is over a million dollars per month operational budget. Um, we are talking about a really tiny fraction. Um, of that. And I think if we're serious about supporting the arts um, as a city, then we need to come up with um, that money and trying to come up with that money off the backs of artists is not uh, the, the right way to go about it. I think it sends the wrong signal to the community as a whole. Right. I agree. Um, are there other points of discussion that anyone wants to make before we bring it to a vote? Well, well again, I, 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 I think in principle, I'm, I'm the least barriers or no barriers is the way to go. I, I agree as well. I don't think it's the job of this committee to set fiscal policy for revenue capture. What I don't understand is why it was instituted to begin with. Was there a recovery plan? to capture some money to help pay for arts. I don't know. So I feel a little blind uh, in the genesis of the application fee. I think the public hate, the material support, I definitely would argue we should 
uh, let go of that and that should be part of the general fund or you know pull out if you will um so i i feel conflicted in that i also would agree we should get rid of both but it it feels odd to be making these decisions in the absence of understanding what does that mean for the city does the city have no view at all on that because if it's really our discretion then yes let's get rid of it i i just don't want the city coming back a year from now saying well you, you all removed this and and this is the consequences so i i just haven't understood the implications of removing it from a fiscal point of view and maybe maybe that's just not my we shouldn't concern ourselves with it and work off the principle of the charter as you said chair uh, member goodman uh yeah well i i agree with that i i, I mean i think we're um i mean i understand our mission but i think fundamentally we're an advisory body we don't have the authority to tell the city to spend money on x y or z and even though there's that money available and we have our charter and it's a, it's a trivial amount of money in the long run i don't i think unless we unless we have a clearer understanding of exactly where that money would come from in the case that we need it um that we should uh, you know we should not vote to change the status quo I mean, we're only talking about a delay of a couple months. I guess the issue is with the application that has to go out, what to put on it. You know, are you gonna are you gonna put it on there or not? So I suppose time is time is of the essence, but I, I guess I'd stick with my original reasoning. I, I just don't think we have enough good information to proceed and to make to make a decision. I I personally think it's only $250. And if I have to find $250, I feel like in somewhere. And I would like to open this up to artists and not have that barrier. And I think it's worth the risk to do that. To, I really do. I, I can't imagine that somehow, somewhere, I couldn't raise $250 if I needed to. Or worst case scenario, we'd have no postcards. I don't know. But I would like to try it myself. Wait, can you have an art show without postcards? Is that a... <laughs> I've heard there's uh, internet installed. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, yeah I suppose. <laughs> You don't really need the postcards. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't actually mail them out. Great just, job. <laughs> I don't get paid for it, so uh, <laughs> good. get rid of them. <laughs> well, are we ready to vote? Um, I believe so, unless there's any final points of discussion from committee. Uh, I, I have one question. So, um, in the event that we find out that there that the motion passes and we find out there's no way to re recover certain costs that need to be covered, um, do we then just put this to a vote again to reinstitute? Is that essentially what happens? So, it's not an intractable decision. It sounds like. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so. I guess that's true. I'm, I don't know. My answer is I don't know. Right. It's it, yeah. It's no more permanent than the last committee's decision to implement it in the first place. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Then, um, Keenan, can you take the vote, please? Sure. Uh, Chair Getch. Yes. Member Bowers. Yes. Member Goodman. No. Member Shaw. Yes. Member Samoski? Yes. Member Raxel? Yes. Okay. So the motion passes. Um, and Sarah, I think it'll be on, on you to um, work alongside <laughs> Keenan to maybe draft something for city council requesting um, yes. that additional $250 for promotion. And admin the uh, documents we send out to. Um, our artists so and, i will be working with him on that and um just one more thing and this is something just to think about and i've been talking to keenan about when you go in the website for albany 
the city of Albany, you have to sift through a couple of layers to get to the arts, you know? And I've been trying to push, you know, somewhere where you could just go, oh, arts, boom, and you could find it, you know, without going through a lot of stuff. And he has offered me a banner, I think it's called, but um, I, I would appreciate it if you would all really go on the website and and um, imagine you would like to find out what the arts were going on in Albany and see how many things you have to go through to get actually what we're doing. Because the answer was that they only put the things on the first page that people push most often. But if it's not there, how can you push it? I don't know. So just check it out for me. <laughs> okay. Everyone has a homework assignment now. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you want a real challenge? Try and find out about the uh, haiku program. Oh, yes. yeah. There you go, Peter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's your next challenge. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, does that in conclude uh, agenda item six two then? Thank you. Yes. I, I would just say my my vote no is a reluctant no. Thank. I do understand what you're saying. But I, anyway, noted. Yeah. Yeah. I could be having a garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, uh, agenda item 6-3 is the Creative Justice Art Project, and um, that is myself and member Samonsky. Uh, so I will kick things off by saying um, that uh, I did work alongside um, Keenan and our assistant city manager um, to draft a proposal to go in front of city council to approve the funding of uh, honorarium for members of the external panel that's required for us to have for the um, Creative Justice Art Project. Um, the, the City Council did approve that, um, so we have secured the funding for that. The next phase um, is to um, select uh, the panel and then hold the, the panel, conduct the panel, and then work with whatever recommendation comes forward from the panel. Um, in terms of the selection of the panel, we're in a slightly awkward moment. This has been a, a bit of a learning curve for me in that um, doing this the way the city does it versus doing the way um, that you would do it within an arts institution um, or an exhibition space is slightly different. Um, we um, have a, a list of proposed panelists that are up for approval by this committee um, to move forward. What's strange about it is that we can't extend the invitation to these panelists um, until we have approval from the committee. So what I am presenting to you are people that we haven't asked and that may not be even interested in being on this panel but pending the approval of this panel, of this committee, um, of the panel, then the next step would be to reach out to these individuals and see if they're available, if they're interested, and if they're um, willing uh, to participate. Does that make sense? Yeah, so we're giving you permission to reach out and ask them if they'd like to do it. Correct, correct. Okay. What, what happens if any one of them says no? This this is what is really uh, frustrating for me. It feels a little bit like it sandbags the process um, in that uh, then I, I think what has to happen is that I have to come forward um, with, an, with another list of candidates um, to gain approval for the next time. There may be potentially a workaround that we could okay the list and authorize the subcommittee to select a panel. Um, Keenan would have to clarify, verify if that's even a possibility. Um, uh, but either way, uh, I think, as, as I understand it, the, the subcommittee itself um, cannot select the panel that, um, or actually, I think, 
<laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up just a second. Um, the assistant city manager initially posed two possibilities. One possibility was to present the list to the committee at this meeting for approval. And the other possibility was to set up um, a second subcommittee separate from the Albany Creative Justice Committee that would be a panel selection committee. And that panel could have the authorization to select the panel. So I think actually, if we want to make sure that all our bases are covered, what we should do tonight is hopefully approve the list of panelists that are suggested um, and also pass a motion for a selection committee in the event that the panelists on that list um, are, are not um, willing or able to participate in the panel. Okay. Right. Um, that way, hopefully, hopefully, um, we're actually able to convene this panel all before the August recess. Um, otherwise, we're looking at another three month or four month extension um, um, before the next phase. Does this include the the arts committee member, the economics committee, you know, the ones that aren't being paid? Yes, I will share all of that, including the panelists. Okay. Um, Thank with everyone, you. so everyone can see um, what the item is. Have you already drafted a motion to that effect? Um, I haven't drafted a specific motion. The motion would be um, to approve the recommended panelists would be the first motion. Um, the second motion would be if the selected panelists are unwilling or unable um, to establish a uh, panel selection subcommittee to select any additional members of the panel that would be needed and uh, convene the panel. Okay. And are you looking for that motion now or is there further? I'll, I'll share the panelists that we have first and, um, and we'll start it there. And then also if there's members of the uh, public who have comments or questions, um, we can also okay. um, um, bring in any public comment as well. Um, so Keenan, um, can I ask you to share the um, attached memo that's part of the agenda? Yeah, of course. Okay, so this is um, this is the memo. As you can see, it, hopefully everyone had a chance to take a look at it already. Um, but for members of the public who may be present hearing it for the first time, I'll just go ahead and, and read through. Uh, per the Public Art Master Plan, the AAC will appoint a selection panel to assist with the public art review process for any project in the PAPP with an estimated cost of $10,000 or more or for any project cited on one of the 12 top priority sites identified in the Public Art Master Plan Survey of Sites. Depending on the number of projects uh, meeting these criteria in a given cycle, the AAC may choose to appoint more than one selection panel or may hire an expert facilitator and may direct funds from the APP fund to cover such costs. In addition, the AAC may appoint a selection panel for any project at any point in the public art review process if the ACC deems this necessary for a fair and informed process. Um, so again, just to summarize, uh, we are required by the ordinance to convene an external panel. Um, this is a city requirement because the budget for this item exceeds $10,000. Um, the first recommended panelist um, is CC Carpio. Uh, CC has produced and exhibited work in the Philippines, Fiji Islands, Cuba, Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, uh, Italy, Norway, Ireland, UK, India, Guam, and throughout the United States. She has been awarded the uh, Rockwood Institute Fellowship for Leaders Engaged in Art as Critical Agent of Change. She also received uh, the New York Foundation of the Art Immigrant Artist Fellowship, a teaching residency at Cafe Red and uh, La Bodica Espacia Cultural at uh, Chela, Guatemala, and um, artist residency with, with uh, cool arts at um, Soma, San Francisco. The City of Oakland, Yerba Buena Center for Arts, UC Berkeley, and Oakland Museum of California have commissioned her work. She is currently working as the gallery's manager for the San Francisco Arts Commission and as a public art advisor for the City of Oakland. She can often be found collaborating with her collective, Trust Your Struggle, teaching and traveling around the world in pursuit of the perfect wall. Um, the second 
uh, proposed um, panelist is Elizabeth Thomas. Elizabeth Thomas is a curator and writer with primary interest in the production of site responsive artworks across a range of media. As director of public engagement for the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, she organized the Regent Retrospective Body Radical with Anna Halperin and Anna Pravaki's Detour. Other recent projects include a performance and radio program with Michael Rakowitz, produced with Philadelphia Mural Arts, where she also organized projects with Kath Katerina Gross, uh, Josh McPhee, and Temporary Services. As Phyllis Wattis Matrix Curator at the University of California, Berkeley Art Museum, she curated new projects with Future Farmers, Trevor Paglin, Emily Royston, Allison Smith, Thomas Saracino, uh, Jill Magid, and Ahmet Ogut among others. She is a senior adjunct professor in curatorial practice at California College of the Arts and writes frequently for a range of publications, most re recently paper monuments as uh, radical, as mother, as salad, as, oh, I think these are maybe separate ones, as shelter. What should art institutions do now? Mm -hmm. uh, that last bit was a mouthful, a salad on its own right. Um, <laughs> And the third panelist um, is uh, Mary Chow, Chu, um, who uh, is an Albany resident. Um, she is now SFAC's Director of Public Art and Collection, um, an award-winning program known nationally for its public art practices, the quality and innovation of the Artworks Commission for Public Spaces, and the care of the city's collection. She was promoted from senior program managers of SFAC's public art program, a post she held since uh, 2018. During her time as program manager, she oversaw major art programs with MTA's Central Subway, the SFPUC, SFO, and the Port. <laughs> Mary developed the Bayview Arts Master Plan and Registry in collaboration with the SFPUC that focuses on community access and equity. She first joined the Arts Commission in 2008 Previously, she worked at Visual Aid in San Francisco and various New York-based cultural institutions, including the Asia Society Museum. She has um, a BS in Business Administration, a BA in Art History, and an MA in Modern Art and Curatorial Studies with an emphasis in public art. In addition to these three voting panelists, uh, we would also have three non-voting members from the city. Um, again, this is authorized in the Public Arts Master Plan. Um, presumably these three people would include um, one member of the Social and Economic Justice Committee, uh, one member of the Economic Development Committee, and one member from the Arts Committee. Uh, the stipend for the three voting members, those three individuals whose bios I read out loud, um, is a total of $1,500, which is $500 per voting member as approved by City Council. Um, for anyone present either on the committee or in the public who has questions about that amount. Um, you can look at the memo item on the last city um, council meeting, which itemizes exactly how that figure is broken down, but it roughly works out to somewhere below $65 an hour um, for their total anticipated time commitment. Um, so with that said, I think we can stop the screen share for now. And then um, uh, if we have questions from the committee, we can open it up for questions. And Member Goodman, I don't know if that's still your hand waving. Oh, no, that's sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can say is it's quite impressive. I hope we can get them. Me too. Um, uh, just to be fully transparent, um, I only know one of those individuals personally. I have no professional relationship with it, with um, any of them. And um, but in speaking with other people in the arts community, other people in uh, civic arts communities, um, some of those people have recommendations from. Um, uh, people that are working in other city arts agencies that I, I've spoken with and recommend them highly. Um, so I just want to be absolutely um, clear about that, that there's, I, I think that they stand on their merits. 
I couldn't agree more. Um, all right, if we have no questions, um, we'll go to public comment and then um, we'll move forward with the motion. Uh, Keenan, do we have any public comment at this time? Uh, no public comments at this time. Okay. Um, so in that case, I would like to put forward a motion that um, we approve the selected lists of panelists um, and grant permission for the Albany Creative Justice Art Project Subcommittee to invite them and hope that um, that they'll answer our call for help. Say yes, please. Um, and uh, so let's start there. I'll, I'll, we'll start, we'll do it one motion at a time. So the motion is to um, approve the, the list of, of suggested panelists. Is there a I'll second? I'll second it. Okay. And Keenan, um, would you take the vote, please? Yes. Uh, Chair Gatch? Yes. Member Bowers? Yes. Member Goodman? Yes. Member Shaw? Yes. Member Samotsky? Yes. And Member Rexel? Yes. Great. So that motion passes. Um, I'd like to make a second motion. Um, if um, any or all of the members, um, the, it's the suggested panelists that have been approved are unavailable, I move that we create a select an Albany Creative Justice Art Project Panel Selection Subcommittee um, to select additional members. Are you specifying where that subcommittee comes from? Uh, we would then, it, once we've created the subcommittee, then um, then it would be from us. We could decide who wants to be on the subcommittee. Oh. So anyone, any one of our committee members could join that subcommittee. Okay. Hey, I second it again. <laughs> Okay, any um, changes to that or any questions about that? Okay, um, Keenan, can you take the vote? Sure. Chair Gatch? Yes. Member Bowers? Yes. Member Goodman? Yes. Member Shaw? Yes. Member Samoski? Yes. And Member Rexel? Yes. Okay, so the motion passes. Um, should we uh, need the selection committee, um, we need to populate that selection committee. Um, I would like to be on that selection committee. Is there anyone else that would like to join me on that selection committee? This is a, sub, this is a subcommittee that may or may not ever um, come into existence. So can you be on that subcommittee if you're on the I think you could be on that subcommittee if you're in any other committees. There's just oh, um, okay. the Brown Act, I think, limits us to three members total. Okay. All right. Uh, I member would Shaw? like to be on it. Oh, okay. Member Samonsky and Member Shaw? Uh, if it's not too much logistical over it, I'd love to join as well. Great. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I my my hope is that that meeting that subcommittee never has to meet. That we um, extend the invitation to those individuals and that they're um, happy to lend their experience and expertise um, to our city, and that we can move forward with a, a recommendation. What are you expecting to get it done by? Uh, I'm really hoping that we'll be able to convene the meeting. Um, uh, ideally, be I guess it. Ideally, I guess it would happen before our next committee meeting, which means uh, in the month of June. Right. Um, that may be too soon. In, in the case that we're not able to meet in June, um, then we have July and potentially August um, to meet as well and then bring the recommendation back to committee in September. Um, but ideally, um, the best case scenario is 
were able to, to convene the panel um, in June. They're able to make a recommendation. The recommendation will come back um, to our committee in July. Um, and then uh, hopefully um, we like what the panel has to say and we're able to make a selection for um, a work to move forward with. And then once that happens, if we approve a project, uh, then I believe that project, there's a, uh, Keenan, you'll need to jump in and help me here. It'll have to go ultimately back to city council for final approval. Um, and there will be um, also, I think a public comment period. Does that come before city council approval or does that come after city council approval? I believe the public comment becomes before, uh, but I can just double check right now for you. Okay. So while um, Keenan is checking that, um, if it comes before, uh, ideally we're able to move right into that public comment period, which will probably be something like 30 or 60 days. And that ideally that'll happen through July and August. Um, or potentially through July, parts of July, August, um, September, and we would have it on city council um, on the calendar for um, that October, that first October meeting at the very latest. So to, to update it, uh, once the artist is chosen um, by the selection panel, uh, there's a community input uh, and notification for about 60 days, and then it goes to council for approval. Okay. Great, thank you for that. Um, okay. Um, Member Samonski, do you have um, anything to add to this agenda item? No, I think you did a great job. Thank you. Um, all right, then we will move forward with our next agenda item, which I've somehow lost track of here. Um, next agenda item is item 6-4. This is uh, subcommittee reports, um, if we have any reports. So first up is the Sculpture Loan Program Subcommittee. Uh, Member Bowers, I believe that is you. Yeah, I'll try to be brief. Uh, um, so we were uh, set to install the second piece uh, at the end of May by the artist uh, Keiko Nelson. She unfortunately uh, had to delay that due to the the individual that was helping install it uh, was uh, hospitalized or, or, or out for medical reasons. So there's a delay in that installation. I think Keenan has been communicating on rescheduling that um, very shortly, uh, we hope in by, you know, this middle part of June. In addition, uh, I think Keenan mentioned already that uh, plaques are being prepared uh, to install on both pieces. Obviously, the first one's already been uh, put up. So when that plaque arrives, we, that will help quite a lot. I noticed the flyers went away very quickly, of course. So having additional uh, information on the sculpture will be uh, much appreciated. And then finally, uh, as we mentioned before, we, once the final piece is installed, the second uh, installation will set up a ribbon cutting ceremony, which would be at the end of July or June, essentially. Um, and that date we'll try to nail down as, as Keenan finds out when the second piece is installed. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Um, any questions from the committee? Okay. Um, and um, do we have any public comment? I think we would run through all of the oh, run through reports okay. and then we'll go to public comment. After. Okay, great. Um, so that brings us into fall into haiku. Uh, members Bergman and Goodman. Right. Uh, in the same situation as last time, um, we'll be opening up uh, in, uh, I believe, in in August. Uh, I I have all the I have all the material I, I need. We just haven't started, but we're moving ahead with the idea that the 
Heiko will be out on the streets in uh, November, December. Okay, great. Uh, any questions from the committee? Okay. Um, uh, Arts and Economic Development Subcommittee, uh, Member Goodman, that's also you. Right. Um, I, did, I, I had some discussion with uh, members of the uh, um, Economic Development Committee from the city, and um, they were going to make a presentation, uh, but it didn't happen at their last meeting. So they ended up not discussing the item at all. So uh, while I do have some things that I could mention, I don't think there's any point in reporting until um, we have better uh, communication with them and figure out exactly where they're at. and. Maybe we'll have some uh, meeting in July so that I can come back to our July meeting with more information. Right now, it's I don't think there's anything worth bringing. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I, we've already covered the Creative Justice Art Project, um, so we'll move to the Poet Laureate Program. Um, it's the it's the member Goodman show, uh, <laughs> right? And I think and member I, uh, I don't think you want a summer rerun. I I think we uh, I think that was basically item one. That's uh, right. Yeah. Our, so I I have nothing to add. Okay, great. Um, and then the art in public places ordinance subcommittee. Um, I don't think uh, we we didn't meet in this last. Um, period. I don't think there's anything particularly um, to add to that. I will say that um, in working with the Albany Creative Justice Art Project and kind of navigating um, um, city city needs and Albany Art Committee desires, um, we are kind of collectively working through some of the language and figuring out um, what's doable and, and um, what isn't doable and uh, how to make things work to the best of everyone's um, abilities. So um that's the closest that i have for an update um on the positive side uh you know we got approval for um for paying people for their expertise uh, on the panel and um hopefully that um sets a precedent moving forward when we look at um uh the language and the ordinance as well uh, member samansky anything you want to no, i think that? what you're saying is true then this concern has larger aspect and each project that we get into you learn a little bit more and a little bit more so as we keep reporting we'll be able to make some better decisions about how this all works great um any questions there from committee members okay um so that are that is all of the um, subcommittee reports, do we have public comment at this time? Uh, no public comment at this time. Okay. Um, and uh, Member Shaw, you're new to all of this, but if you identify particular projects that you're interested in working on or particular subcommittees um, that you um, are interested in joining, uh, you can either say so now, you can um, work with Keenan um, on the side, you can contact me also, and we can talk about um, what the scope is. And of course, if you have questions, um, by all means, um, shout them out. And member Raxall, um, also I noticed that your name um, isn't currently on any of the subcommittees, so the same applies um, to you as well. If there's particular subcommittees that you are interested in working on and wanna be more involved, um, Please do so. And okay. member, member Goodman, I see your hand is up. Yes, uh, Member Shaw, you mentioned you were interested in murals in the um, Economic Development Subcommittee. That's one of their projects because um, it's one of the things that's been identified as the, you know, from the from our uh, our um, corresponding uh, Economic Development Committee. Um, they're very interested in murals too. So that's something that's probably going to be. Uh, moving ahead, if you're interested in getting involved in that, um, great. Yeah, how do I, do I motion to join the committee or how does this work? Um, uh, so for 
since we're still in the subcommittee reports, um, it's not technically an action minute itself. Um, so if you're interested in a certain um, subcommittee, uh, we can definitely um, invite that as well, but uh, we would have to make that a ge uh, official agenda size item uh, in the next meeting. But that's not to say you can start uh, getting involved in these uh, subcommittees beforehand. Can I uh, can I send uh, can I send him some some of the information correspondence I've already had with the with the other committee? If he's uh, interested in joining that sub subcommittee, yes. Ah, I, I I am in fact interested. Okay, and uh, Keenan, if you could um, give me an email address, and I'll. Uh, and I, I, I Chair Gotcha, I, I will CC you on this too. Great, thank you. Um, and also, just so uh, everyone knows, um, these are the subcommittees, but these are not all of the items on our work plan. So um, if there are other items on the work plan that people are interested in working on, um, then again, I encourage you to look at our work plan. Um, you can also contact Keenan for a copy of the work plan. I believe it's buried somewhere on the website as, as well. Um, and uh, you can see any and all of the items that are on the work plan that need to be worked on. All right, um, I believe, oh, um, now I'm spacing out. Did we already ask for public comment on yes, this correct. item? Uh, all right, so this is, uh, this concludes agenda item 6-4, which brings us um to item seven future agenda items and uh this is also um you can suggest agenda items all the way up until about a week before the meeting so it doesn't just have to happen right now it sounds like um if members shaw or raxall want to join additional subcommittees that we would need to have an agenda item um for that in the next um in the next meeting. Are there, are there any other additional agenda items that any committee members want to recommend? I'm sure I'll have something on the Poet Laureate. And uh, assume there'll be something on the Economic Development Subcommittee too. I'll add both of those. Um, I don't think, well, I, I, I don't yet know if we'll have an addition an additional agenda item or it'll be a subcommittee report for you from the um, creative justice project. So we'll we'll hold off on that for now. Um, anyone else? Okay, and do we have public comment for future agenda items? Uh, no public comment at this time. Okay. Well, that concludes um, agenda item number seven, and that concludes our agenda. Uh, our next meeting will be Monday, July 11th. Um, and I believe I will be present, but jet lagged for that one. So, um, uh, so I will see everyone there. And if there's no further comments or questions, uh, this meeting is officially adjourned. Great. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.